Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 24th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Ricardo de Silva. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear sisters and brothers, today we hear in the Gospels about what it is to belong to God's kingdom, to the reign of God that calls us to sacrifice ourselves for the sake of God and for the sake of one another. And so for the times when we've perhaps been reluctant to do that, let us bring to mind our sinfulness before a loving God. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. You came to call sinners Christe eleison. Christe eleison. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, Creator and Ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy Grant that we may serve you with all our heart, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. For the Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been confounded. Therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk in, in the, the presence, presence of the Lord in the, in the land, land of, of the living. living. I love the Lord, for he has heard my voice, my appeal. For he has turned his ear to me whenever I call. I will, I will walk in, in the, the presence, presence of the Lord in the, the land, land of, of the living. living. They surrounded me, the snares of death. The anguish of the grave has found me. 
anguish and sorrow I found. I called on the name of the Lord. Deliver my soul, O Lord. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. How gracious is the Lord and just. Our God has compassion. The Lord protects the simple. I was brought low and he saved me. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. He has kept my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. A reading from the letter of St. James. What does it profit, my brothers and sisters, if a man says he has faith but has not works? Can his faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and in lack of daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what does it profit? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I, by my works, will show you in my faith. The Word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Far be it from me to glory, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, Who do men say that I am? And they told him, John the Baptist, and others say Elijah and others one of the prophets. And he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Christ. And he charged them to tell no one about him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he said this plainly, and Peter took him and began to rebuke him. But turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not on the side of God, but of men. And he called to him the multitude with his disciples and said to them, If any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel's will save it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We've all been in that classroom lecture, or even now that Zoom meeting, where someone just has the answers to every question posed at the tip of their tongue. A know-it-all who doesn't stop for a millisecond to consider whether the answer blurted out has any bearing on the question or issue raised. This may be just the kind of mood the author is attempting to evoke in the scene we've just heard, 
which marks a crucial halfway point in the Gospel of Mark. Jesus, walking towards the villages of Caesarea Philippi, a great hub of financial and social power at the time, turns towards his disciples, the Twelve, and asks them a question. Who do people say I am? Jesus asks his disciples. They say you are a prophet, like Elijah or John the Baptist. Jesus' disciples immediately reply. After all, they had witnessed since being called to follow Jesus the healing miracles that Jesus had worked, his preaching and teaching. It seemed to make sense that he was a prophetic voice in the community, a prophet indeed. But Jesus does not appear to be satisfied with this response. Perhaps he found their answer too quick and therefore ill-considered. Pressing his disciples, Jesus again turns to the twelve and asks, Who do you say I am? His second question is met with less enthusiastic response than the first, and only Peter appears to venture a prompt response, or at least that's the only disciple whose answer the author of the gospel chooses to share with us. You are the Christ, Peter tells Jesus. Jesus immediately scolds Peter and instructs his disciples to tell no one what Peter had said. But why would Jesus say this? Surely if Jesus has come to announce the good news, he would want to spread that message far and wide, that others may be drawn to God's love. Is that not his mission as the Son of God? This curiosity in Jesus' response has come to be referred to as the messianic secret, and we see it repeatedly in this gospel, where Jesus instructs those he heals or encounters whose lives are changed forever and for the better by, the inter by his interaction with them, not to tell anyone who he is. And yet, here he is, taunting his disciples with a question he wants them to know the answer to, but not to make public or shout from the rooftops. Why? What's going on here? Perhaps what happens next in the exchange will offer us some clue as to what's happening. Jesus reveals he will suffer, die, and rise again after three days. Although Jesus' revelation of his own resurrection, that he will rise, the most hopeful part in what he tells the disciples at this time, seems to go unheard. Only suffering and dying loom large, and especially on Peter. Peter, hearing Jesus' confession, we're told, takes him aside and rebukes him. We don't know the precise nature of this rebuke, as we are not privy to the words that Peter speaks to Jesus in reply. But it's probably safe to presume that what has offended and distressed Peter was Jesus' revelation of the bitter end that the supposed Messiah will suffer, the Christ will suffer. Spare thought for Peter, the poor guy, and for Jesus' disciples who appear to agree with their brother Peter. It's not too much of a stretch to empathize with Jesus' followers. Peter and the rest of Jesus' disciples had already made the hard decision of leaving their lives behind and following Jesus, who they believed was, above all, a political messiah, someone who had come to deliver them from the oppression of the Roman Empire. Now Jesus is saying, actually, you're following a guy whose path will ultimately lead him and consequently you to more suffering and eventually death. It's a hard pill to swallow, wildly irrational, one that Jesus' followers could not be blamed for questioning the sanity of. But this is why Jesus' second question to his disciples is so important and crucial for us today. Jesus has no intention of misleading his followers. He speaks the truth. He will not mislead us or anybody else 
about what kind of Christ he is, and consequently what kind of life we are opting into in choosing to follow Jesus on the path to Jerusalem, a path that will not lead to riches and fame, but ignominy and death. Jesus pulls no punches. Jesus' injunction to his disciples, tell no one, is not intended as a safeguard for his personal safety. Jesus knows his fate is in God's hand and that God is his ultimate deliverer. Rather, his injunction is intended as a safeguard against misinformation. Jesus wants to prevent his disciples from spreading fake news about the kind of Messiah he is. We could all do well with leaders who are honest in this vein, whose manifesto is laid bare before the people choose who will lead them into the future. Just imagine if Jesus' disciples and the people he encountered and healed had spread the news he was a political Messiah, it would not only result in great mayhem and bloodshed in first century Palestine and put Jesus at the center of the action as the hero everyone was expecting, where there would be winners and losers. No, it would be a lie because that's just not the mission that Jesus came to fulfill. It's not the mission that God entrusted to Jesus. Jesus came into the world to show them that the version of success they had been exposed to in their earthly rulers, a vision that had infiltrated into their minds and hearts, was skewed and idolatrous. They had bought into the fake news that first century Palestine was promoting. They thought that to make it in the world, they needed to have riches, power, status, pleasure. They had failed to see that real power was in empowering those who had none, who lacked food, and in restoring the health of those suffering from debilitating mental and physical ailments. They were missing the point. All they had was pure gift given to them by God, and no usurping of an earthly ruler's power would bring them greater fulfillment. They were riding high on their own status and had not grasped that in giving them the power to drive out evil spirits and to preach the word of God, the coming of God's kingdom, Jesus was initiating a new world order, a new conception of making it in the world. And so the question, who do you say I am? A question directed at them and at us. Jesus, like every good teacher, asked the question not for a rapid-fire answer, but to provoke a deeper reflection about what it meant to make God's self human and come among them as one of them, choosing to share in our suffering and pain, not escaping from it or willing it away. In asking that question, Jesus wasn't expecting his disciples to get it right off the bat. He was beginning a conversation or a lesson. And we know that his disciples will keep getting it wrong. The conversation which, through his example and teaching, Jesus will offer answers to. But to do that, for his followers then and us now, we need to be ready to accept a new set of eyes that Jesus offers us to see clearly the realities around us. We need to be ready to receive a fleshy and full-blooded heart that replaces a stone heart and teaches us to be compassionate and merciful in the way of Jesus, not seeking to exact revenge or to avenge our aggressors, but rather to love them into God's justice. A new understanding that sees the world through God's eyes and not our human conception of selfishness and pride. An understanding that brings all into God's love and abundant providence. And as we will see with Peter, who had the answer at the ready 
and was right to see Jesus as Christ. He only really understands who Jesus is after repeated denials and betrayals. Denials that deliver Jesus to his death, but that never separate Peter from Jesus' love for him or from following Jesus, establishing his church and ultimately paying the price with his life as a martyr for the faith. And thus proving what Jesus had taught him decades prior, that it is never too late to accept the new life given him in Jesus, to deny himself, take up his cross, and follow Jesus. And that, my dear friends, is what it means to lose ourselves for the sake of the gospel. It's an invitation that we too can take up whenever we are ready to follow God, who became human for us all. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God has infinite compassion for all creation. Let us now turn to our loving Father with our prayers. For the Church, that she may preach Christ's gospel of love, welcoming all who come to her. God of mercy and love, hear our prayer. For all who risk their lives for the sake of the gospel, that they may bear insult and suffering with patience, strength, and hope. God of mercy and love, hear our prayer. For the powerless and the oppressed, especially for the people of Af Afghanistan and Haiti, who suffer so acutely at this time, that sinful structures of injustice may be torn down and that all humanity may live in peace. God of mercy and love, hear our prayer. For those struggling with their faith in God, that they may open their hearts to God's grace and turn to the Lord with renewed love and commitment. God of mercy and love, hear our prayer. For ourselves, that we may see the face of Christ in our neighbors and respond generously to the grace we are given to serve those in need. God of mercy and love, hear our prayer. For the sick and the suffering, the hungry, and those experiencing homelessness, that they will be comforted by the knowledge of God's love. God of mercy and love, hear our prayer for all who have died, that they may find rest and mercy in God's presence, and that those whom they loved may be consoled. God of mercy and love, 
hear our prayer. Merciful God, your love for us surpasses all our hopes and desires. Forgive our failings, keep us in your peace, and lead us in the way of salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the all God's holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Butti, our Bishop, the clergy and all of God's faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be free always from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us take a moment to pray for peace in our hearts and in our world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but I only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, when you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. 
By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies, so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord by the example of your lives. Thanks be to God.